If you thought Majin Buu didn't have any future after Super, then you'd be very surprised. Hey guys, Masako X here. Now one of the most interesting things about Dragon Ball as it was approaching its end was not Akira Toriyama's sheer randomness post-Cell, but no, it was due to his creation of the Margins. These pink gobs of goo were the main attraction of one of the longest arcs in Dragon Ball's history, for better or worse. To be fair though, there is a good reason for why the Buu arc is so long. The anime and manga were only a few chapters apart, so if they just kept going at the same breakneck pace as they were before, the manga would have caught up with the anime and then we'd have gone into proper filler territory. The only solution would be to have a hiatus for a few months or just have a completely different arc where nothing in the manga happens until they can come back again. And in the middle of an arc? That would be so impractical and that would have gone down really bad. We saw what happened with Naruto. Now most people think that after Majin Buu is turned into Mr. Buu and he's all good, that he's got no character development left for him. You'd be wrong. After GT and Super, there is plenty of stuff for this Margin to do. Margin Boo is not where the magical Jin race ends. Now before we get to the specifics, let's step back and see how Akira Toriyama came up with this mystical creature. Now the primary influence for Margin Boo was that of one of his later editors, Fuyoto Takeda. Oh, oh don't be mean Toriyama, is that just because he's fat? No, it's actually more to do with his jolly personality at the time. You could argue this for hours, but honestly, this isn't surprising. Toriyama has a history of basing his villains on past editors that he had a bit of a grudge with. They basically tell him what to do, he didn't like being told what to do, so he would work them into the manga as a bad guy. However, he denies doing this overtly and just blames his subconscious for just coming up with the idea on its own. Right. In any case, Toriyama wished to create a villain the likes of which we had never seen before in Dragon Ball. And that was a complete surprise! Hmm. A villain who can regenerate is based around a devil or a demon and can also turn people into food. Yep, we've never seen that before. Now from the surface, you can immediately tell that there is some Arabian influence going on in Majin Buu's attire. We can see the genie-like outfit, we can see the Arabian nuances in terms of the actual clothing composition. It just is all there. He's just a big fat genie. And you can also glean that from his name. Margin translates into English as demon god or demon person. So you could describe him as demon god Boo. There is also the Arabic word Jin, which means devil or demon or some kind of demonic entity. He is actually quite godlike in the form that he is ageless, he is close to indestructible, and he consists of mostly pure emotions, in this case evil, when you concentrate him down to the likes of Kid Buu. But the Buu that we are most familiar with is actually modelled off the Grand Supreme Kai of Universe 7, which he absorbed many, many millions of years ago. He was a kind and jolly soul, very benevolent, but he had a very big appetite. So that's where loads of Majin Buu's personality traits come from. His personality is plain to see in Boo today. But let's get back into telling of Majin Buu's future. We have to look to a very interesting Dragon Ball property which only came out in Korea and China and Taiwan. Something that we in the West never really got to see, but we've heard of somewhere muttering in the undergrounds of the Dragon Ball community. Dragon Ball Online. An MMO, Masako? An MMO we could play with Dragon Ball characters? Yeah, but don't get too excited. We will never get to try it in its official capacity because the servers closed back in 2013. But there are efforts to get the game working again and translated into English, so be on the lookout for something called Dragon Ball Online Global. Now the significance of this game in the context of Majin Buu is quite notable. Toriyama had a fair bit of control in the game's development, and in particular with the story. However, the actual nitty gritty about what he did with the game is not entirely certain, but it is suffice to say, based on evidence we have, that he was involved at least in the capacity of a supervisor, as well as the studio that he works with a lot, Bird Studio. You could liken his involvement to what he's doing with Dragon Ball Super. So if Toriyama is involved, that must make it canon, right? Well, kind of, but not really as of now. It is true that Bird Studio and Shueisha, long-time owners and partners of the Dragon Ball franchise, were involved in the development of this game, but we must not assume that this game's lore and future is set in stone. Things could be rewritten at any time, and things may not be accurate going forward, but 
For now, it's a very interesting read. But on the flip side of that, some of the game's ideas have found new homes in other properties, in particular ones that we have seen in the West. I'm talking about Dragon Ball Xenoverse, and in Japan, Dragon Ball Heroes. Toa and Mira, the big bads of Xenoverse 1 and 2, came from Dragon Ball Online. Their character creation model? That came from Online too. The online based hub world? Dragon Ball Online as well. The whole concept of going back in time to past Dragon Ball events? Dragon Ball Online too. So even though we didn't get the MMO, we still got some of its ideas in various games. That's kinda cool, right? No? You still want the MMO? Yeah, I kinda do too. So okay, Masako, you've told us that there is a story that Toriyama at least supervised. What is it then? Tell us! Well, it's pretty extensive for just a very simple video game. It goes all the way to age 1000, 216 years after the end of Z. We're talking way past GT here. Now I will go into detail about this timeline in another video if you like, but we're going to concentrate on the future that involves Margin Buu. Now if you played Xenoverse 2, and in particular if you played as a Margin, you might have noticed Buu reading something called Bob and Margaret and it sounded a little bit racy. That is in the online lore, one of Mr. Satan's erotic novels. Buu found a copy. Oh my. Boo's desire for a family comes from the online game too, and in Xenoverse 2, you do get to help Boo start a family by creating these little kids which populate his house and actually give you special items in return. That's kinda cool. So let's head to age 790, six years after the end of Z. Margin Boo is reading the stories of Bob and Margaret and starts to wonder about the human concept of love. After millions of years of just wandering around or being locked up in a tank or being controlled by Barbady and Bibbidi, he really didn't stop to think about the fact of that his existence is pretty lonely. He hadn't thought about having a true companion or a family. It never occurred to him. Now a shoe from his evil side, Good Boo could then start to ponder about these kind of things. He wants to know what love is! He quickly grows the urge for a female soulmate, a Margaret to his Bob. Over the next few months, Boo starts to collate data and information about what will make the perfect mate from Satan's books or whatever he has the inclination to read. Remember, Margin Boo's attention span ain't the greatest. Now, according to the Chronicle section of the Korean Dragon Ball Online gameplay manual, this is how the events transpired. Thankfully, this has been translated into English thanks to HG Project over on the Kanzenshu forum. With a spirited shout, smoke violently spewed forth from the holes in Mr. Boo's head. Accumulating over the top of Boo's head, the smoke began to materialize into a life form. He had divided into a male and female Boo. Wah! It's my girlfriend, said Boo. I also want to love you. Please take good care of me, said Miss Boo. The female Boo, who had been born from the original Mr. Boo's obsession, was naturally well liked by the male Boo. The two Boos became happily married and formed a happy home together. Soon after, the two started to desire a child, like human families. Thus, they decide to read Bob and Margaret's Forbidden Games again. So you could thank the author of the Bob and Margaret books for the birth of the Margin race. Also, you might gleam that the Margin race as a whole are pretty naive and innocent. There is a reason why Good Boo is sometimes referred to as Innocent Boo. It's in his nature, he can't help it. He doesn't know any better. All his evil stuff's gone now. It stands to reason. The guide continues. Oi, I think that if you do something called Booby Booby, a baby will come out, said Boo. Yes, Booby Booby, you say. You do it like this. This is what it says. Really, I I'm not joking. I, I can show you the source. Uh, 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 moving on. The Boo couple tore pieces off various parts of their bodies, booby boobying by kneading them and making a lot of dumpling shaped forms. A powerful beam shot from the two Boos. Then the many Boo dumplings transformed into the form of a baby Boo. The love loves result, which the inexperienced couple found by kneading with their hands. This is how the Margin race came to be. This is both adorable and a little bit awkward, and kind of sounds like something you'd hear in a fan fiction, but this is an official guide from an official game that had the Dragon Ball license on it. Yeah. In any case, over the next 200 years, the population of the Margin race began to grow, using the same process of fission and booby boobying to create new offspring. However, according to the official guide, 
Their power levels began to diminish with each generation. It would be diluted, their power would decrease, and by the time we get to age 1000 when Dragon Ball Online takes place, their power level is roughly the same as any other race on the planet. We're talking Namekians, Saiyan descendants, humans. However, it is rumored that the old powers of Margin Buu lurk deep down somewhere in all Margin that are living. It could be unleashed at any moment. Very convenient for an MMO game. So there we go. Majin Buu wanted to find love and did so in his own special way. It's actually kind of cute and it does sound like something he would do. Honestly though, I'm glad that he did find love and companionship, especially when you consider that in age 820, Mr. Satan dies of old age. He doesn't have anyone that he knows anymore or whoever he does, he's out of touch. He now has a family in which to pour his time into. He prepared himself for when his best friend, Mr. Satan, passed away. I'm actually glad that Dragon Ball Online's timeline exists. Now, I know that many purists will say, oh, it's not part of the official canon, it's fake. It's something that you really shouldn't pay attention to. But it's something. It's something to peruse over and theorize and wonder. It's there and I want to use it. I shouldn't be shunned from using it just because it came from a game and it wasn't from the official anime or manga. Also, the fact that elements of this timeline are being reused in other properties does imply that this has good foundations. Perhaps we'll see more of it pop up in the future. Who knows or dares to dream? So what do you guys think? Do you like the idea of how Boo found love? Would you like me to cover more of the Dragon Ball Online timeline? Leave a comment below and let's get this discussion going. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Until the next one, be sure to like and subscribe. Catch you later.